Welcome back to Swordbox. Thanks for checking us out today. Let's look at our verse. The verse for today says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, his own special people, that you may be proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Peter 2.9 We've been working our way through the plagues that are going on here in Egypt, and we're down to the ninth plague. And I'm going to read it for you. It's just a few verses. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness which may even be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand towards heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Then Pharaoh called Moses and said, Go serve the Lord, only let your flocks and your herds be kept back. Let your little ones also go with you. But Moses said, You must also give us sacrifices and burnt offerings, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Our livestock shall also go with us. And he goes on to say that, you know, it has to be God's way, basically. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened once again. Pharaoh said to him, in verse 28, Get away from me, take heed to yourself, and see my face no more. For in the day you see my face, you shall die. So Moses said, You have spoken well. I will never see your face again. So things have gotten a little bit heated. And we have just seen a horrible plague. And, you know, I don't know how dark that must have been, but just to give you an idea, this is probably what God was talking about. Absolute, complete darkness. You can't see your hand in front of your face. Can you imagine being like this for three straight days? It must have been absolutely horrible. You know what? When we don't have Jesus, we are in the dark. We don't have his light in us. Sin really isn't a struggle. It's just natural. We may experience God's goodness and some of his blessings, but we reject the God of the blessings. When we are saved, God puts his light, his Holy Spirit in us. We no longer have to walk in darkness, but as we submit to him daily, his light shines in us and his light shines through us. God made a clear distinction between the Hebrew people and the Egyptians here in this plague. The Egyptians were in total darkness for three days while the Hebrews walked around in the light. That is an absolute perfect picture of people today. We can choose to walk in the light with Jesus or walk in darkness that leads to death. When life is over on this earth, God will separate the saved from the lost. The Bible is very clear. The lost will be in the blackness of darkness forever, 2 Peter 2.17. But the redeemed will walk with God and he will be our light. John 3, 9 says, And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Ephesians 5, 8 says, You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. In Ephesians chapter 5, we get some characteristics of walking in darkness. And these are just a few. Fornication, covetousness, filthiness, foolish talking, coarse joking, idolatry. And some of the characteristics of walking in God's light are goodness, righteousness, and truth, produced not by us, but by God's Holy Spirit working in us. I'll leave you with one final verse. The end of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14, it says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will be your light. God bless you. You know what? I hope you will choose to walk in the light today, walk in the light of His love, and I hope you'll choose to keep coming back here and get a small little word from God each day. We'll see you next time.